Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Simon Richardson and today's tips and tricks video will be covering one of the most basic of CG rebuilds inside of the Foundry's Nuke. We'll be using Myers Mental Ray Passes, which can collectively be termed as Arbitrary Output Variables, or for short, AOVs. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to read in any project assets that you may need, and you can do this in a number of ways. The first is to navigate up to my toolbar here on the top left hand side and hit the icon. The second is to navigate down into my node graph using tab on my keyboard, then type in the node that I wish to bring in. Or third and most conveniently is typing R on my keyboard. For the purposes of this demo, I have conveniently navigated to our project folder from which we are gonna need three elements from two different locations. Firstly, I'm going to go into our scans directory to pick up our backplate. Selecting this, ensuring it is orange, I will then hit next. This will allow me to go back up directories and then back down to the location of my other assets. Clicking on the first and then shift clicking on the second will now allow me to open all files simultaneously. Once I've successfully read in our project assets, we're going to want to do one thing, and that is set up our project globals. Double clicking on one of these read nodes will bring up the options for this node. If we note in here at the format size of resolution of this object, it is a resolution of 1500 by 1000. If we come back down now into our node graph and press S, we'll bring up the project settings for our project. This is where we need to tell Nuke what our working resolution is, as well as our frame range and frames per second. Because we're working with a one frame still, these two will be just fine for now. However, we're gonna to want to come down here and change our project full size format. Taking note of this drop down menu, you will notice that there are several standard resolutions. Some such as HD set at 1920 by 1080, or PAL set at 720 by 576. Because our resolution is a non-standard, Nuke will by default on reading the file in, put this in our drop-down menu for us. If we take a closer look at our free read-in files, we can see that we have two file formats. The first in my backplate, which has been saved out as a JPEG, and the second for my two CG renders that have been saved out as an EXR. EXR is a file format that was invented by Industrial Light and & Magic and is important for a couple of reasons. The first main one is that it can be saved out as a linear 32-bit float file and the second is that they can house multiple channel sets. These channel sets can be viewed independently by coming up to our viewer drop-down menu up here on the top left hand side. If we take note currently we are looking inside the RGBA channel set. Dropping this down will highlight all the channel sets or layers embedded inside our multi-channel EXR. If we click on, say for example, the diffuse, what we are now looking at is the diffuse contribution for our CG render. As well as now coming down, we can also select on, if we wanted, the reflective contribution for our CG render. What we need to do as a compositor is now extract each of these independent layers or channel sets to work within our RGBA channel set. And we do this with what's known as a shuffle. Upon selection, we now want to hit tab and then type shuffle. In doing so, this will bring up the properties for that node. And it is now down to us to extract each layer or channel that we need to take. So for example, I'm going to drop down the in one menu and I'm going to extract diffuse. This will by default put the diffuse layer or channel set into the RGBA layer or channel set. Looking at my shuffle node now, and then obviously going back so we can see it in the RGBA space, we now see that upon this, we have now taken out or extracted the diffuse layer. Using spacebar on F on my keyboard with my cursor in the viewer, I'm able to fit full screen my object. Toggling using A will highlight that the incorrect alpha has been shuffled. Once again, hitting spacebar, I can go back to my full screen interface. Looking at my shuffle node, we can prove that Nuke in this example has used the blue channel for its alpha information. This is likely because the CG artist when rendering to save on data has not included an alpha 
in each of the layers. Thankfully in this example this issue can easily be rectified. If we select our original read node and hit hotkey 1 and then come up down to our drop down menu and take note the CG artist has kindly rendered us out a separate channel set of alpha data. Coming back down into my node graph and toggling onto the shuffle node and setting our viewer drop down back to its original space we now essentially in the shuffle node want to combine different channels from different layers or channel sets. We've said that currently we're taking the diffuse and shuffling that out into the red, green and blue channels. This is what is giving us our colour information. However, we now want to extract a separate layer into this RGBA output. In doing so, we just simply come down and select where our alpha information is coming from. Inside this matrix option, we simply now just have to come down and redivert the information. From now coming back and looking at what we have, we can now toggle using A and notice that we have all the information we need. For the purposes of this demo, I have correctly shuffled out each of the layers that can contribute to our beauty rebuild. The objective from now is to fulfill using these layers this following equation. This equation fundamentally is taking each of the result passes and combining them together using an additive operation. To do so, we use a merge node. Hitting hotkey M in our node graph will bring up that node. If I attach my B pipe and my A pipe, and then take a look at our result. This currently is incorrect. Noticing the merge operation, it is currently set to an over. What this is actually saying is we are taking the diffuse as our background and taking a pre-multiplied result of our foreground and laying it straight over. This to fulfill our equation we need to change. Much like Photoshop or After Effects we have blending modes or blending operations. Dropping this down we can now change this to make it additive or plussing it. What I have now done is taken my diffuse layer and my indirect layer and simply added the two together. I will now need to do the same for both my reflection and my specular. If like me you like to keep your scripts organised you can do a couple of things. The first that you can see is what I've actually done to the shuffle nodes. Bringing up a separate shuffle node, we can now see that we've created what's known as a postage stamp. Double clicking on this node and then going to the node tab will allow us to toggle this little checker box here. The second is what we can do is what's known as hipping or hinging our tree. Holding control and then grabbing the little yellow circle will give us this option. What I would like to do now is complete what's known as a slap comp. This is not necessarily the final result that we want to achieve but it's just going to give us a realistic overview of what is working and what's not. If we take at the moment we have a pre-multiply result here and simply want to bring up another merge node ensuring this time that I have to make sure my pipes are around the correct way. Ensuring my foreground is running on my A pipe and then si simply laying that over my background which is running down my B pipe. If I look at this result, I now should have my cans over my back plate. If however we consider that we've been given a second CG render. This CG render is for interactive reflections on our table and needs to be applied upstream from our CG passes. Simply we can bring in another merge node again ensuring that the B pipe is running down and apply this as another straight over. Overing this will now put my reflections on the table correctly. 
This is different because my attenuation, instead of coming from the individual passes, is actually coming from the alpha channel itself. If I wanted to change this, I could simply put in a multiply math node. What I'd have to do, however, is ensure that my channel selection, instead of being on all, is actually put to alpha. Grading my alpha channel down will now mean that I'm lowering the attenuation of the render pass over the backplate. Looking now again at my final result, we want to take a closer look at my edges. This is coming from our merge operation from here. What exactly is going on with this plus? If we take note at the value of alpha from our initial plus, we have a value of 2. What we're doing is, well as applying an additive operation to my RGB, I'm actually adding together the alphas that are coming from these two render layers as well. Which means, by the time I get to the bottom, I have an alpha buildup of a value of 4. This, when applying my over, is incorrect. To correct this, what I simply could do is lowering this and using hotkey K, bringing in a copy node. Plugging my copy node in, I now want to redirect the alpha upstream and put it so it replaces it at the bottom of my comp. For this, I need to ensure that my A pipe has the sufficient data. Plugging it directly in to the original EXR will ensure that we have what we need. If we step up and have a look what our A pipe is attached to, we will see that we are looking at the original RGBA channel set, otherwise known as the beauty. Toggling A will highlight that the CG artist has kindly baked out an alpha channel here as well. This means that in my copy node I can leave it at default. What I have here is two columns. These represent my A pipe and this side represents my B pipe. What the copy node is doing is replacing the alpha channel from B with the incoming alpha from A. If we now come down and have a look at our copy node, we can now prove that we indeed have a correct alpha value of 1. Coming back and having a look at our over node, we can see that we have now resolved our edge issue. Now that we have created the slap comp and rebuilt our beauty, we would like to go in and safeguard ourselves for colour correction. If we look at what we have here in the tree, each of these shuffle nodes are pre-multiplied images. For any form of additive colour correction, we will need to unpre-multiply or divide each colour channel by the alpha. Looking at this, we've said that we have a pre-multiplied image. If we now put under each shuffle node an unpre-multiply, we have now divided the RGB by its alpha. This does however mean that if we were to over this, we would have an unpre-multiplied result. Therefore, as you can see here, I have re-pre-multiplied our RGB image back against the original alpha. We have now successfully completed this short tutorial. To summarise we have briefly gone over the EXR file format and shuffle, as well as demonstrating an accurate rebuild of our beauty render. I hope you have enjoyed it and would look forward to hearing from you. If you would like to see any of our other free tutorials, please feel free to check out our free tutorials section online at escapestudios.com. Thank you very much for watching and happy comping.